Fala Fala here to good evening. Welcome to our news bulletin. Leading our news bulletin for tonight, government's main employment body, the New Public Service Commission, is taking a tough stance with public servants and overseas travel. Last Friday, one public servant was denied travel by the Commission, despite turning up to the airport for departure. The Commission has said that it is policy and normal protocol that all public servants are to meet certain requirements in order for Cabinet approval or endorsement of travel. The New Public Service Commission admits that it is a policy that may not have been enforced strictly in the past, but this is not new and public servants need to be aware of it. The Commission also appreciates the valuable contribution that some heads of departments may have on regional bodies, but their core function is to meet the requirements and fulfil duties as set out by government. Cabinet has also endorsed that no heads of departments or public services may travel unless they have submitted their annual reports, submitted travel papers to Cabinet at least two to three weeks prior to travel, and also submitted all previous travel reports. The decision to stop one public servant from travelling last Friday was made by Cabinet on recommendations made by the New Public Service Commission. Nui's Health Department is continuing in their efforts on awareness in the non-communicable disease debate. Recently at the United Nations General Assembly, world leaders raised the challenges faced by countries in reducing the number of deaths caused by non-communicable diseases. 63% of the world population die from non-communicable diseases or 36 million annually with 9 million dying before 60 years. In Niue, the public health sector are working tirelessly to address these concerns. According to the non-communicable disease officer Griselda Mokoya, the number of people who had some sort of non-communicable disease has increased and communities need to be aware that if the trend continues, the effects on the island's small population will be devastating. People, she says, need to address their lifestyles and work towards better health habits. One of the most identified problems she said, is diet. People need to change their eating habits and the way that they eat. There must be control, but another contributing factor is exercise. Minister of Health Mrs. Joan Villiamo said she is concerned with the problem that is global and people need to be mindful of individual well-being. People should be aware of the deadly challenge before it's too late. Another area of concern, she said, is the continuing flow of people out of Niue because they need medical assistance not available on the island. This concern, she says, is being addressed by her department and are working to find ways to acquire assistance for those in need. Public Health Department awareness continues and if people wish more information, they can bring or visit the hospital. Alopi North Village held their annual show day over the weekend but not many local residents attended, begging the question of whether government should consider a ban on other activities taking place on the same day or for village councils to reconsider event dates. Even though the numbers were low, the show day continued with the abundance of food sales and entertainment. Alofi North ladies entertained the crowd, but it was the rationale behind the uniform colours this year that had everyone talking. The effort was brilliant and songs belted out and performed to by the groups was reminiscent of the old school days an effort many hoped other villagers will concentrate on for the continuation of Daunganiwe. Last Saturday, the women's cricket competition wrapped up with Zone 4 topping the table with an impressing 4 out of 4 wins in 4 tournaments. Zone 4, which consists of Alofi South, Tamkotong and Amasele mixed team, blitzed their competition during their three matches. But it was a close call when they took on Zone 3 over the weekend, managing to catch the score of just over 100. The standings after the competition, Zone 4 with 15 points, Zone 2 with 11 points, Zone 3 with 7 points and Zone 1 with 3 points. The next proposed competition is scheduled for the Constitution celebrations with an expected team of overseas New Wayans to take on the locals. The team to meet the visitors has been selected to compete. That list will be made available in the near future. As the world's attention is drawn to the World Cup hosted in New Zealand, local rugby is still on, with the wrap-up of the Tri-Series Sevens tournaments on the island last Saturday. 
As it stands, Alofi Marcos remains on top, making a clean sweep as the clear winner, winning all games in each of the three tournaments with an overall 34 points. Tuapa's in second with 19 points, Likula Kapumtolo with 12 points, Amaseli with 10 points, Cavaliers with 5 points and Hakupu with 3 points. Discussions whether to proceed with the planned 10-a-side competition is ongoing. Player numbers has always been an issue for local rugby developments. Despite the fact that 10-a-side rugby is not recognised by the IRB, it will provide players with more game time. The 15s rugby season is expected to start in late October, time permitting as a lead-up to preparations for the Furu Oceania Cup. The last time Niue won the Oceania Cup was in 2008. However, a decision whether the Tenaside tournament will go ahead is yet to be made by the Niue Rugby Union with planned registrations closing tomorrow. And those are our local news stories here on BCN for tonight.